You know, there's a difference between coaching, educating and training. Training is for muscles. Coaching, educating is for up here. The funny thing about learning, or the paradox about learning is, the more you learn, the more you know, the more you, you realise you don't know. And it's those areas that you don't know um, that help you grow. So, yeah, it, it's 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 just part of life's journey. And if you think that you come out of some place with uh, some letters behind your name, etc., and, and that's you made, not so, pal. Um, that's just the start. You may come out of out of university or, or whatever with a degree that says this, this, and this. Um, but at the end of the day, um, if you're going to teach, if you're going to have an impact, then if you do not have this ability to look long term and see what it is you want, if you do not have this ability to understand that that's crucial, but at the same time know in your head that you might get the sack tomorrow, you'll not be as good a teacher, I don't think, as you want to be. When I ask the question, what is the most important muscle in your body? And get their answers, my answer is, for me, it's your brain. That's the one that will determine everything you do. Culture is the, the most effective learning tool, teaching tool, we have. You have to understand yourself, you have to understand what you value, you have to know what you value, you have to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Uh, but the best, and it's, you, it's actually learning's normally like this, Gandhi said it best, be the person you want to see. So you have to embody the culture. You can't talk the talk if you're not going to walk the walk. I always told my staff, look, don't say bad news up. If there's bad news, give it me early, then I can deal with it. We can deal with it. I want them to be trustworthy and honest. I want them to be able. I want them in their own specific field to be better than me. I want them to challenge me. I want to learn off them. And I want them to have the courage of their own convictions. I want them to tell me what they think. Um, not tell me what they think I want to hear. When you get a new job, then what, what you're there to do is improve. No chairman is going to appoint you and say, and by the way, you don't have to do as well as the last bloke. <laughs> the premise is you've got to do better than the last bloke. So that's given. And then you have to work out what it is you want to do. And then you have to sort out in what order? What are the priorities here? Now, I happen to think that, that the, the culture you personify, you embody, you want to see reflected in them, is still the most important element in your, in your tool bag. But you have to prioritise. So if results are imperative, then you have to look at what are my priorities? And you have to say, right, now, what are they? What is the list? Where are the quick wins? Um, and, and carry on with that. So it, it's not, I, I don't think you can work, work properly with people if you do not envisage there's a long term. Leadership is about a journey. So to go in and say, look, I might only be here 50 games, so, well, there you go. It's like getting married and then at the altar saying, it's only for a year, isn't it? Okay. You might have a problem <laughs> looking across and saying, I do. Your job as a manager and a coach is to help others get better. And, it, and it's as simple as that. That's, that's the fundamental. If you ask me what, what what really, really matters when you're the head coach or the manager or whatever, then I'd say right at the middle is your ability to make people better, mm. make them improve, help them improve. In, in simple words, listen pal, the contract is, I make you better 
the player, so you do better. But in you doing better, I make me better. So this is not a one-way process. This is this is you and I are agreeing. See that ladder there? You and I are going to agree to get each other up that ladder a few more runs than where we are now. People have a responsibility to point out to you what the implications of this job are. Um, and certainly one of the qualities you re will require will be resilience. Now some people are naturally resilient, some are not, but mm -hmm. the better ways of being resilient can be learned. But ideally, coming into this, when you say to yourself, I want to be a manager, one of the questions you ask yourself is, do I enjoy problems? Do I look forward to problems? All those problems, are, do I see them as opportunities? Or do I see them as something that I'd rather not have to deal with? Uh, and if, if I possibly can't, I won't. I'll go around them. No, it is part of the job. It, 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 if you want to be a surgeon, then you ain't got to be scared of blood. And management's the same. If you want to be a manager, resilience is an absolute essential. Um, otherwise, you won't enjoy the job. You will not enjoy the job because there are as many problems as there are nice days. <laughs>